Hebrews chapter 10. Verse 35. I read. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which had great recompense of reward. 36. For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. 37. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come, and will not tarry. 38. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. 29, 39, sorry. But we are not of the of them who draw back unto prediction, but of them that believe to the serving of the of the soul. Them that believe with all their hearts. Hallelujah. He said the just shall live by what? By faith. Now, when the Bible says the just, it's talking about the righteous. The righteous shall live by what? By faith. And when he said the righteous, he's talking about those who are doing the right thing before God. Those who are doing the right thing before God Almighty. Praise the Lord. In the place that we read, the Bible is encouraging us that we should not draw back. In other words, that those that we draw back, they will miss their blessings. And people will always try to draw back, especially when they have prayed. After they have prayed and expected what they have prayed for to manifest, and when they can't see it, when they can't experience it, they begin to backslide. Some begin to draw back because what they have been waiting for has not yet manifest. But you know one thing the prayer that we read, he said, even after you have prayed, there is a need for you to be patient. There is a need for you to wait. There is a need for you to wait in God's appointed time. But we are living in a generation that people do not want to wait till God's appointed time. People want their own time. To manifest. There are people that are holding the scripture. The Bible said declare a thing shall come to pass. That is true. There are people that are holding a scripture and say ask anything in my name you shall receive. But God did not say when will you receive. Praise the Lord. Is it now or is it tomorrow or is it next year? Is somebody hearing me? Your duty is to pray. God wants you to pray. And after you pray, the next thing you need to wait. Because he is the one that has the power to answer the prayer. Not even you. Your duty is to pray. It's not like somebody walking. You are being employed to walk. So your duty is to work, but it is the master that will do all that will pay you. So you need to wait. Is somebody hearing me? But when you look at what is happening around, people come to God for miracles, 80%. And when they can't get that miracle, they go again to another place. You can see it. It doesn't work like that in these things of God. When God, when Israelite asks Moses, you always tell us, I am that I am. The God who created us. The God who has set a promised land before us. 
You always tell us that our God is mighty. Our God is big. You always tell us that our God is merciful. Now we want to see that God. Hallelujah. Now we want to see that God. And God said to Moses, tell them to go and wait for me somewhere. I will pass in their front. Hallelujah. Suddenly, something passed in their form. They can't see the beginning. They cannot see the end. Praise the Lord. So many people say, yes, God appeared to them. They saw God. How does God look like? Is he a black man? Is he a white man? If they see God, meaning that God has size, meaning that God has a color, meaning that it has something like image. Is somebody hearing me? What some say they saw back of God. How does God back look like? You know, see, that's why I tell you, this scripture, you need revelation to understand it. Hallelujah. Some verses or some version may put it that they saw the back of God. That is not true. What God was telling Moses, that thing that looked like back, he showed them. Follow me. When you follow me, you will do what? You will see me or you will know me very well. Follow me. Tell them to do what? To follow me. Without following God, there is no way you can know God. Without being in the land of God, in the high word of God, there is no way you can know God. You can only know God through following him and the scripture. And for you to know God, not knowing him physically or try to know him by image or by physical appearance, but to have revelation concerning God. Because the Bible says he's a spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in what? In the spirit. The only thing you can see about God is his promises, his blessings. Manifestation of his power. That's why in the scripture you see God can manifest in form of fire, in form of wind. All kinds of dimension that you can see and experience the manifestation of God. There is no one thing you can use to say, yes, this is the way that God manifests. He is everything. Praise the Lord. Our God is what? Everything. In the book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 33, he said, but you must seek God first and his kingdom. He said, and his righteousness and every other thing shall be what? Shall be added. Look at it. He says, seek ye first word, the kingdom of God. And his word, righteousness. The just, the righteous. If you want to know about God more, you must seek him first. You must follow him. You must desire to know him. Is somebody hearing me? God is not a magician or a native doctor. As people think. People thinking that God is just come, ask God, bless me. And he bless you, you run away. The blessings of God is for you to know him. The more you know him, the more you are blessed. Is somebody hearing me? The more 
more you draw closer to him, there is a more he release that favor upon your life. The more you come closer, there is a more you know things concern God and concern your destiny. There is a more you have the revelation and the knowledge. And there is a more you receive the blessings. Blessings of God is not something that you just go and grab and go. No. You must follow him. Psalm 91, he said, he that dwell in where? In the secret place of who? Of the most high God. He shall abide under the shadow of the Lord. Of, in, in other words, God will cover the person. The person will assess the glory. Praise the Lord. Forget about those who are giving you knowledge that Jesus, Jesus has paid a price. You don't need righteousness. Because Jesus has done everything for you. You don't need to live a righteous life. You don't need to live a pure life, a holy life. You know, do whatever you like. And because Jesus has paid a price. That is a teaching from the pit of hell. God still remains God. He still remains holy. Praise the Lord. Jesus only came to give you access for second chance. Say second chance. That you can approach God under the throne of grace. And who is the grace? Jesus. What is grace? Unmerited favor. You can see. That is the purpose that he came. That when you live in error, when you make a mistake, you will not be judged. Jesus is there. You only confess. Confession and repentance is not to remain in the sin. Confession and repentance is to change your way from the evil way and from the bad way to the right way. And when you begin to walk right way, that's what they call righteousness. It may not be a guarantee or hundred percent. At least through Jesus Christ, by confessing, by following Jesus. You can't confess without following Jesus. That righteousness will not be for you. Because some people hold the teaching that as long as Jesus is there, even though you commit sin, you shouldn't worry. You can see it. You don't even you don't need to confess anymore because Jesus has paid the price. It is a wrong teaching, my brothers and sisters. It is a wrong teaching. That is a wrong doctrine. The Bible said, no eye shall see God without what? Without holiness and righteousness. You can't see God. Amen. Romans 1, 17. It said, for, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from further to, from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by what? By faith. The righteous shall live by faith. That faith is what? Belief. You can't believe on somebody without following the person. Are you with me? If you believe in Jesus, you must follow Jesus. You must worship him all the time. And that is faith. I don't know how people interpret their faith, whether their faith is just a normal, you know, a word from their mouth. Isaiah 42 verse 6. He said, I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. We hold your hand and we keep you and give you for a, a loving and of the people for light of Gentiles. Now, here, God is speaking through the prophet Isaiah. You remember in the book of Isaiah chapter 6? How God appeared on the throne before Isaiah. That was a time of Isaiah. It was written there that in the year that Isaiah died, Isaiah saw the Lord. You know what that means? Isaiah had been called in the office of prophet. But yet, he was still not living rightly before God. When you read verse chapter 6 of the Isaiah, verse 7 to 8, God asked him a question. You are a prophet, Isaiah. Who shall I send? 
Who shall we send to the, to the Zion, to the Israel? To save the people, to judge Israel. After Isaiah have confessed and repented, he said, the Lord do what? Send me. You can say, send me. Why did that statement come at later? Send me. But when you read chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, and chapter 5, he has already functioned in the office of a prophet. So to let you understand that it's not only when you accepted Christ, you still need to maintain your salvation. You still need to live right before God. You still need to live holy and present your body and your life as holy and as God has commanded. That's the only way we experience the blessings of God. What are the guaranteed benefits of righteousness? When we talk about righteousness, number one, God hears the prayer of the righteous and he delivered them from all their troubles. When you read the book of Psalm 34, verses 15, it says, The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and he hears their prayers. When you also read verse 17, he said, the righteous will cry, and the Lord will do what? We hear their cry. And they will deliver them. We have been qualified as righteousness through Christ. But yet, I don't want you to be carried away and be misled. Being qualified by Christ does not mean that you will not live a holy life and a righteous life. Being qualified through Christ does not mean that you will commit sin and begin to live in sin every day in your life. You won't experience blessings of God. Because sin is one of the barriers. Even as you have accepted Christ, as long as you commit sin, my brother and my sisters, definitely you will not experience the blessings of God. Because the Bible says, Isaiah 59, verse 1 to 2, it says, My hands are not shutting, neither my ear that it heavy that it cannot hear your prayer. He said, But you are what? Your iniquity. Your sin. Your sin. Your sin. You can feel it when you commit sin. Look at your, your spiritual life. Praise the Lord. Look at how your spirit is. When you are living in sin, there is totally different between the kingdom of light and the kingdom of what? Of darkness. There is no two ways about it. Whether you are trying to configure the scripture or try to make the scripture to suit your situation. The Bible says there are ways that sin arise for a man, but the end thereof is what? Destruction. We are living in the day that people want the scripture to suit their sinful situations. And when you look at them, they always go to those, you know, say, this scripture is written according to the, how the old people, how they lived their life before. Some part of the scripture, Old Testament, and some even some Paul teaching, even some Jesus teaching also. You see, but now some people they will go to those scripture that make highlight concerning, you know, area of like fornication, drunkenness, you know, all kinds of those things that, you know, that, that is not in line with the, the, the holiness and the righteousness of God. Some people will carry it, say, look at what the scripture says. Praise the Lord. Do you know that the scripture may be talking to some certain people during that time because of how the situation of things because of how it is hallelujah so that is why you need revelations don't be tricked by the devil always know when you talk about the blessings of God the blessings of God cannot do without the righteousness and holiness of God are you hearing me he cannot. That is why when you receive a message or revelation, 
if it's not in line, if it contradicts the holiness and the righteousness of God, it means it is not of God. The Bible says God is what is holy. And everything in his dominion, they are what? They are pure and what? And holy. Hallelujah. The Lord hear their prayers and he hear their cry. Second Chronicles 69. He said, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart are with him or loyal to him. God wants to bless you, my brother and my sisters. Number two, there is no failure or falling for the righteous. The righteous will not fall. No matter how. Hallelujah. The righteous will not do all. They will not fall. Psalm 24 verse 19. He said the righteous man will be afflicted or many are the afflictions of the righteous. But God will do what? We deliver them. He will save them. They may be afflicted. Or they can be afflicted. But yet, God will do what? Will deliver them. God will set them free. You see, that's why when you see a righteous man, if you fall into trouble, before you know, God has shown mercy. Hallelujah. Others may remain there. But God, by his mercy, he delivered the righteous. Anyone here tonight, you are going through one circumstance on the other. You are going through one trouble on the other. You are going through afflictions of life. By the basis of God and his righteousness, you are set free and you are delivered. In the name of Jesus, you are set free and delivered. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Psalm 112 verse 6. He says, surely the righteous will never be shaken. They will be remembered forever. Those who are doing the right thing, they will be remembered what? Forever. Your good work will always be remembered. God will not forsake your work and God will not forsake the righteous. When he talk about righteous doing the right thing, any man that do good or doing the right thing, you will receive the reward. It only takes time. You begin to see the fruit. Let me tell you, your life is like a plantation. What you have planted in less than one year or two years or three years, you begin to do what? To harvest it. And the more you plant good things, the more you harvest good things. That's how it is. It continues. As you continue to serve God and doing the right thing, serving him with holiness and righteousness, that is how the blessing continues and it becomes generation to generation. Praise the Lord. Number three, there is no hungry, no lack for those who are righteous before God. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 3, it said the Lord does not let the righteous go hungry. But he denied the craving of the wicked. The Lord will not let the righteous to do what? To go hungry. If you are going through hungry in your life, you need to shake your ways. Praise the Lord. Shake your life. The word of God never lies. Philippians 4.19 He said he will supply all your needs. He will supply all your needs. God went to bless you and he went to supply all your needs. That is why amend your ways. Amend your Forget about it. You can carry Bible. You can always sing holy, holy, holy and the rest. But who knows your hearts? Who knows what you do alone in your room? Hallelujah. When you are alone, who knows what you are doing? Only you and Almighty God knows. Because he's the one that sees in secret. Pastor doesn't know. Church member doesn't know. But you know. Hallelujah. 
That's why some people, before you challenge God concerning his blessing, weigh your life. Second Corinthians 13, 5. Paul said, examine your faith. Examine yourself. Examine yourself. Proverbs 11, 18. He said, the one who sow righteousness we do all, we reap a short reward. The one who sow righteousness, the one who do right thing, the one who sow good, we surely reap good. You can see it. So you need to amend your ways. Those who are living all kind of wickedness life, you are living a life that is crook. You know, all your life is terrible. You call yourself a Christian, but your life outside, your life in secret places, your life can if, if even the hidden are better than you. There are those who are not Christian. They don't believe anything, but they maintain right, righteous life. Do you know that? They don't believe in any religion. But yet, they live a pure and right life. But what about you, my brother and my sisters? What about you? What kind of life are you living? Ask yourself. What are the kind of things and the kind of life you are living? What about if trumpet blow today and they say the world has come to an end? Are you guaranteeing yourself to be those who will be raptured or those who will be taken away? Praise the Lord. Is somebody hearing me? Matthew 5 C. He said, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. For they shall be what? They shall be fed with it. Those who hunger for righteousness. In other words, if you are hunger for righteousness, you will never go hunger for food. Are you with me? You will never lack anything. But the Bible said the righteous will not go for hungry. They will never and God will not disappoint you in Jesus name. Amen. Psalm 146 verse 8 He said the Lord loves the righteous. God loves the, the righteous. He loves them. The eyes of the Lord is upon them. He preserves them. When they cry, he hears their cry. When they call on him, he hear their prayer. Any time, any day, or any time they are passing through difficulties, he will always be there to save them and deliver them. The last, and we pray. One of the guaranteed benefits of the righteous is everlasting inheritance. An inheritance that you will pass to your generation. There are people, let me tell you, some of the favor, some of the grace you are benefiting because your parents served. The blessing has been transferred to you. Because the blessings of God is generational. As you are serving God now, you are not only the one to reap your service. Your children, children will still reap the service. Your next generation will reap the service. They will reap everything that you have sold. That was the reason why Solomon, Solomon couldn't struggle because the father David, he has labored in the vineyard of God. He has served God and he has found favor in the sight of God. When Solomon kept up and the Bible says he was the richest man among the richest king among all kings in Israel. He has gold, he has everything, he has wisdom and when he prayed unto God, the Bible said God hearkened to his voice and God, he gave him everything because somebody has laid a foundation. Praise the Lord. Let's pray, let's pray. Our time is fast spent. We are going to pray just this prayer before I hand the mic over. I don't know the kind of life you are living. Only you know. But it is better you confess it and let God know that it's your mistake. 
it is better you are mended. The Bible says, confess and repent. No, no, we change from it. In Proverbs 28, 13, he say, he that covereth his sin shall not what? Shall not prosper. You can see it. He that covereth his sin shall not what? Prosper. Don't blame God if you are not prospering. Maybe there is a sin you are hiding. You are covering. Hallelujah. Amen. Say, my father, my father, help me out. Every weakness in my life, anywhere I am not able to help myself, Lord, help me. Help me from that habit. Help me from that weakness. Help me, Father. I cry for help. Help me out. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Declare, declare it. Pray, 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 pray. I cannot help myself. Ask the Lord to help you. To help you out. Lord, help my spirit. Help. 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 We thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Lift up your hands. Father, I bless your children. Lord, help them from every weakness. Amen. Lord, let this be their week. As they have turned back to you, Lord, prosper them. Amen. 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 In the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray that before end of this week, you will have every reason to glorify God. Amen. You will rejoice. Amen. That struggle is over. Amen. That life of toiling is over. Amen. There is a new beginning. Amen. There is a new thing. Amen. A new thing. Amen. A new thing. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. As you go out here, may you go with favor. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Put your hands together for Master Jesus. All free time. All free time. Blessed time. She may give me when you will be the man, he will be the king. Thank you for as many that are giving. Thank you for your blessings upon their life. Even as we go, may your presence go with us. Lord, we have received your word and you have revived our spirit. You have renewed our strength. You have led us out of the place of darkness and put us into the place of light. 
And Lord, I pray that Lord, your children will experience your blessings upon their life. May you experience greater grace in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, for all our families, all our loved ones. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please, we'll be having our three days fasting starting tomorrow and uh, Friday and Saturday, last day. I encourage you to be part of it. We're going to pray for blessings of God, breakthrough. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 That's what I'm led since two days ago. A lot of people, I'm seeing a lot of people that uh, uh, like stuck one place. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And uh, the reason why we should pray because the devil wants to turn people to be begging and to be stranded. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And that shall not be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Our God is a God of abundance. And all I pray that after these three days, you will experience abundance. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's share the grace. May the grace, grace of, of the Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ, the love of God, Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest about with us now forevermore. Surely, goodness and men shall follow us all the days of our life. And we shall do in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. God bless you.